The views and opinions expressed on any program are those of the persons appearing on the program and do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of the new media factory. Some programs on this network might include strong images and language and may not be suitable for all audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. Well, good evening everyone. Welcome to the first episode of Fever Pitch. My name is Rick Olivares and I'm here with my good buddy Jonah Romero. Jonah. Hey guys, I'm Jonah. I'm sure you've seen me before. Where have I seen you before? I have no idea. Well, actually, this guy he plays for Kaya. Jonah, you might want to tell the viewers out there a little more about yourself. So, I've come to the Philippines. I play for Kaya in the UFL in Division One here. I'm also part of the Guam men's national team. Um, I also coach younger kids, Kaya Academy. And if you're just traveling the world, playing football my whole life. I guess some people want to know, do you have any Filipino blood in you? I have no Filipino blood in me, none at all. But you like it here in the Philippines? But I love it here in the Philippines. I love the Philippines. All right, there you have it, Jonah Romero, my buddy and co-host here for Fever Pitch. My name is Rick Olivares. I'm a journalist, I'm also a PR person. I'm the media officer also for the United Football League. And um, well, we're really excited about the show. It's the first episode and we've got a lot in store for you out there. Jonah, you might want to tell them what's in store for them tonight so this is our first episode so we ask you guys to bear with us as uh we're both fairly new at this and we're going with the punches um yeah. so we're gonna be here every wednesday 6 6 p.m uh we're basically going to talk about football that's going on here in the philippines games of the week uh we got to have different characters showing up here different characters. types of comedy <laughs> have a little bit of everything on this on this show so don't miss an episode because you never know what you're going to miss or who you're going to miss jonah i think you're going to be leading off with your top five you see jonah jonah's this guy who observes the game so much and he comes up with a list a list of the five craziest people the five best goals and whatever and that's what he's going to be doing for us tonight he's going to bear that first list ever on this show then after that we're going to be breaking down the game last night's big game between Loyola and Stalin and another segment that we have is what we call center pitch where we invite some guests over and tonight's guest Jonah where are these Today we have some two good Filipino guys here <laughs> with us from the Green Archers we have Chiefy and my buddy Pasin Ling I forget Tating Pasilan Tating yeah. Pasilan can you Pronounce the Filipino name, sorry there, guys. <laughs> <laughs> but we got two great guys from the Green Archers here. Um, so we'll watch, we'll talk a little bit with them, we'll ask them a few questions about their team, and then we'll have them not be teammates and battle it out as we play games. Yeah, we're going to have to play that. against each other, though. So it might be a little different feeling for them tonight. Right. And after that, once, uh, once we talk to Chiefy and uh, Tating, uh, after that, we're going to show you a video about a goalkeeper who th some people say is the sexiest goalkeeper in the he's, UFL. He says he's the sexiest goalkeeper <laughs> in the UFL. Right. Not some people. He says he's the sexiest. <laughs> right. And I'll, we also have a short interview with Miko Mabanag, the, the new midfielder for Nomads. All right. Jonah, your top five for the week. So my week, this week, <laughs> every week we're going to have a top five. And for all our people watching, all the fans out there, you can always request what you would like to see. You can send it through Twitter, through Facebook, any way you can get in touch with me or Rick. We don't have Facebook yet or Twitter, but we might have it tomorrow. Like I said, we're, we're here, we're rolling with the punches today. So this week's top five, we're gonna do top five crazy haircuts that I found this week in the UFL. You're not a part of that. No, I'm not a part of that. I'm normal, I'm normal compared to these guys. Just, just to be sure. Okay. So with my number one, with well, number five, my pick, I have Jason DeJong. Let me get this up here for you guys. <laughs> oh, wow. Jason DeJong from Global. He used to be a Stallions, now he's at Global just recently with his little kissy, kissy lips there on the side of his neck. Uh, I actually asked DeJong for one picture and he ended up making a collage of himself here <laughs> and sending me three, but they're all three of the same, same view here as you can tell. So we got this, I guess it's a, what, I would say a zero on the side and nothing off the middle there. And now he's, he's going out his facial hair. So, uh, you know, our little bad boy DeJong, who's actually going a little bit soft in us lately. But he's a great guy, good friend, good player. Okay, for those watching at home, 
the hickey does not come with a haircut. <laughs> and it's, it's permanent, so kids, do not do that to yourself. It is permanent. Okay, what's the number four? So my number four, I got from my team, from Kai FC, AK47, Alu. Alu he's King a, Boo. He's a winger for Kaya. So uh, <laughs> it's funny because every time I talk to AK, the reason I picked his hair and I picked him is because I'm always like, how do you, how do you pick what hairstyle you're going to do? He says, he goes to the barber, he sits in the chair and just says, do something crazy to my head. <laughs> so I don't, even know if, I don't even know if he likes his haircuts, if he just, I mean, he's like, my hair goes back in a week. So every week he's got something new. Uh, right here I would say he looks like a ram. <laughs> so, and then number four we got, sorry there, that's not number four. <laughs> number three? Number three would be Eves. All right. We have Eves. He's we from Pachanga. Right. Eves is a center back of Pachanga. Eves Ashime, one of those funny dudes. Funny guy, great from heart. Pachanga. He's from Pachanga. He's center back, captain of Pachanga. Um, very solid in the back. The reason I like his haircuts because uh, I always talk to Eves all the time, and uh, I call him the Kimbo Slice, Kimbo of, Slice. of the Philippines. He's got this Kimbo look. If you guys don't know who Kimbo is, he, he used to be a big fighter, got popular through YouTube, uh, basically for beating up people <laughs> outside in the streets. And now we, every time I look at Eves and I see him go up against people and the way he tackles, I always call him Kimbo Slice. That's Kimbo Slice, guys. <laughs> that is Kimbo Slice. That's Eves Ashime of Pachanga. That is one thick boy there. <laughs> Don't worry, he's deceiving. Definitely a fast guy. But that, that boy can play, huh? Yeah, he can definitely play. He's one of the play. best center backs yeah, in the country right yeah, now. one of the best center backs in the country. And he's from the Ivory Coast, same as uh, Didier Drogba. Yeah. So on to number two, we have Yaya. Yaya is a center midfielder from Passagard. And wait till you see this. Just wait till you see this guy's haircut. Oh my God. This is Yaya. He's the center midfielder of Passagard. <laughs> Yaya used to come to our Kaya trainings with us and I kind of always knew he was one, one character. <laughs> so I, what I call this is I call a Twinkie on Yaya's head. If you guys have ever eaten Twinkies, that's what a Twinkie looks like. <laughs> Yaya's a good guy though. If you see him, he's always dressed really nice for every game, supports every team. But uh, I don't know if the suits go with that type of hair. <laughs> but a very, very stylish guy. This is definitely Yaya's style right here. Okay. Which takes us to number one. Who's number one? Which is Jerry. Jerry from Global, the right back of Global. Jerry's hair. Let's see, bring it up here. This is for all the ladies. If you have any suggestions for this guy and his hair. Look at that hair. He always does one of these. You can do one of those all game long, or the slick back. You know, I, I remember Jonah, when we were in the Suzuki Cup in 2010, Jerry would simulate these pole dances, and uh, he'd wave his hair, and after a while, some of the Vietnamese people actually thought he, he was a lady. <laughs> maybe, maybe Jerry has a, a second life that we don't know about. Who knows what he does at night, but that is some nice hair he's got going on. It's actually longer right now. And right now he's actually wearing a ponytail, and I think yeah. it just goes down to his butt. Actually, I think it's part of his tactics when he defends, you know, because they get... Uh, he, when as guys run by, he just whips them. Yeah, exactly. Whips them with the ponytail. Yeah. So Maybe that's why I feel young has been such a tough time going against Maybe. him. Maybe. He's fast. Very right. fast defender. Right. You imagine all that hair running that fast. It's like a horse almost. That's right. That's right. So there you have it. That's Jonah's top five of the so week. So that is my top five of the week. Again, if you guys would like to see anything, uh, it can be comedy, it can be football, anything would you like to see. Like I said, that is, that's hair for this week. Next week, who knows what we'll have, but that's why you got to tune in next week. <laughs> All right. For the next part of our program, we're going to talk about last night's big match between Loyola and Stallion. Yeah, huge, huge game. And what we're going to be doing is show some video of that game. And we're going to show you some of the goals, actually. It was such a big game because the winner is going to move up to first place. And here's some video. Hi, I'm sorry. 
So what happened last night was Stylings and Loyola were playing to uh, see who would take over the first first spot in the table. Um, Loyola basically went on to an early lead, and then Stylings toward the end just came out and uh, outplayed them. It seemed like Loyola just broke down. Um, they lost key players in the back. They had no replacements. Um, players were playing out of position. So at a point, Loyola was winning 2-1. Ended up losing the game, four two. Oh, no. Do we do it from the Do we do it from the top too? So here we're gonna show you the goals of last night. Again, guys, bear with us. It's only our first episode here. We're still rookies. Okay, let's go. Do we do it from the top? Okay. Okay. All right. What we want to do is show you some video from last night's game. Here's the first goal. That's the first goal by Phil Young last button. They're just capitalizing the mistake of being back. On the middle, on your way. Can never give Phil too much room there. Definitely one of the best finishers. But here's a tying goal. That, that's another mean dude, Rufo Sanchez. Rufo Sanchez, he's leading the league right now in goals, actually. I think he's up to 11 goals now. I think the, this person right behind him is Phil with uh, I think seven or eight. And here's that quick retaliation by Leola. Nifty pass by Jean to Matthew Hartman who scores. And he didn't give Stalin much time to celebrate because Leola immediately retaliated for that nifty finish. So they went into the half 2-1. Um, I was actually training last night. When I got home, I got to watch this on TV and I saw Matt's goal. and. I call his first touch there a, a blessed touch. Right, right. That was one blessed touch, and Phil it just happened to fall his way. So at this point in the game, basically the ball is rolling Loyola's way. Right, right. For the first half, what was happening was that it was almost a stalemate. They were trying to cancel out each other, and but Loyola looked looked to threaten early on. Yeah. But what Stalin was trying to do was very much what like Green Archers tried to do in the first match by trying to slip that ball through the defense or lift that ball over the defenders. And Rufo is such a dangerous, dangerous player. You cannot give him, you cannot put him anywhere near the box. You have to push him a, a lot right. farther out push because him he, out can, wide. he can finish with either foot. Mm -hmm. Right. Now in the second half, that's where all things change because Loyola was leading 2-1 two two, to one two to one and a half. at the end of the first 45 minutes and in the second half, there were a few changes, and essentially what what uh, Stallion did was that they wanted to press a little more, be a little more aggressive against Loyola because they saw that uh, Mark Hartman and the other midfielders of Loyola were not functioning. So they decided to attack them, press them, press them, and attack that vulnerable right side of Loyola. We want to show a little more video right here, and um, and that's yeah, they're right. Okay, I think we're gonna play this video. We'd like to thank Active for this bit of video right here. We're gonna see the replay of that. This is Stalin's third goal here. Yeah. This is a great, uh, with Hector there, slipping that ball in. It's a great run. When I was watching this, I didn't think he was actually gonna shoot. I thought he was gonna cross it into the back post. So I think that might have thrown uh, Charisma off there. But again, if you notice, uh, Jonah, it, it's coming from that right side yep. of Loyola, which has been their vulnerable side all season long. In fact, the fourth goal that they conceded came off that flank where right. Nathan Alquiroz, a late substitute, finished off for that fourth goal for yep. a 4-2 win. And, you know, Jonah, um, you've played against these clubs. Mm -hmm. What's it like to play Stalin with a, guy, with a big dude like Rufo up front? Well, Rufo's, uh, he's very good at finishing. He's very good at, as a striker. He knows his job. He's always able to find the back of the net. The thing I like about Rufo is he doesn't get tired. He doesn't stop working. So maybe he'll start walking. He's on your, you know, on your backside, your back shoulder. Actually, no, he's, boom, making a run. It takes a little, maybe like a five second break, but he's always constantly moving. He's always looking for the ball. So Rufo, he's, he's very good at holding the ball up for Stalin right, as well. Right. So they play it into him. He's a big guy. He's able to hold defenders off. So he's very good at holding defenders off and playing off them. But the thing I really like about him is that when he holds them off and he plays off, he'll spin right off the defender and make sure to get forward and be an option again. So that's a very good thing about Rufo. Um, 
I think Stallions the second half just they totally dominated the right. whole game. I think they they weren't just one step ahead of Loyola, two steps. I think they were about three steps ahead of Loyola. And actually, I talked to a few of the Loyola guys um, after the game. You know, they're pretty upset, but um, you know, it's like they mentally they broke down. I don't know if Stallions really afford if they should ever lost Stallions four two. I, I definitely saw like a two one game. That's what actually I had predicted earlier in the day. It was like a two one game. Never thought there'd be six goals in that in that match, but then again, Loyola lost many of their defenders. Right, people cramping up. They lost their center back. Yeah, they lost their left back. Rox, uh, Roxy came out of the game. Um, so Loyola took a few hits, and Stallions were just able to capitalize. Actually, I'm kind of surprised because when you look at Loyola, they have theoretically a deeper bench than Stallion. But last night, it was evident that their midfield was not functioning the way they were. It was a little surprising to see. Mark Hartman go down a little more to the back instead of go up front with that ball and attack. And that slowed down their, their, their offense, you know. So, but some people are saying right now that uh, it might be a little more difficult for Loyola. They've not beaten the top two teams in the UFL. But we've got a whole second round to play. That was just the end of the first yeah. round. I mean, the season's, there's still plenty of games to play in the season. The first round is just ending. Um, there's still a hold on another round. You never know, you know, teams peak at the right time, I Definitely. always say. Yeah. Some teams always peak at the right time, some teams peak too early. Right. So you never know. I mean, this, this is a great league. Every team has a great team. Every game is a good game. You can't ever overlook any teams in this league. That's right. You know, UFL Tuesday was not just Stallion and Loyola. There was the first match of the day's doubleheader that was between Green Archers United and no man that went down to the final second of play. When Fever Pitch comes back, we're gonna be inviting two of those dudes who helped conspire Green Archers to that victory. We're gonna have Chiefy Kaligdong and Tating Pasilan. So keep it right here on the new Media Factory. This. John this is different from John this. John this is Buntis, like that. But she does not <laughs> tears off. Tears off! Anyway, John this does not know. <laughs> this is a professional show. I will put the merienda here. <laughs> so John this. And I'm now happy to present to you Carlo Tayo. Look at this tata Tayo. Snacks. Ano ba to? Ganyan ba yan? Tapos. Ang puti. Ay, tapos. Dito ba pwede ba dyan? Pwede, pwede. Concealer. <laughs> Ayan, para sa show mo, ha? O. Oh. Aray ko. Ang mayaya ba? Pwede ba itong ano? <coughs> Zora. Pang ano ba to? Oil absorbing? Pwede pa itong pang nose line? <laughs> Tito oh. Kay, may caution. A when, caution! When caution! Mas ah! <laughs> ng glamour te! Oh. When used for the first two weeks, more pimples will appear. <laughs> It's not a good thing. 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 Every Thursday, 7.30 to 8.30, only here on The Factory. All right, welcome back to the first episode of Fever Pitch. I'm Rick Olivares, and with me is my partner, Jonah Romero. Jonah, you want to introduce our two guests for tonight? <laughs> you can introduce me, I'm having a hard time saying it. It's Tating, Tating. Tating. Pasilang. Pasilang. Tating, Pasilang. I definitely know this guy. I definitely play against some great player. I always only see the back of his jersey. So Tating, Pasilang. And Chiefy, my man Chiefy here. <laughs> Guys, Green Archers, as of yesterday, bago magsimula yung laban against Nomads, you were one, one, and six. Last game nyo for the first round. Parang, Nag one, nag, nag score si Chief, tapos naka goal din yung, yung Nomads. After that, parang may desperation. Ano nangyari? Hindi ba kayo nag panic doon sa loob, Chief? Um, actually, um, it's, uh, um, the, we, we, we start um, in the first half, uh, really, you know, um, the team effort nandoon yung lahat ng baga. Siyempre, we have a lot of chances on the, the first half. So, so on, the, on the 
tagatapos after the 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 first half uh, we got uh, like two minutes in the the, first, the second half do nagkaroon ng uh, problem sa, sa sa back four and the uh, siguro yung communication and um, yung um, uh, defending so medyo relax so that's why the the, the momentum ng ng um, nomads uh, the 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 yeah yung yung um um split seconds ng ng error the the convert to a goal so yeah we try to ano we try to to come back on the the second half so that's it we we come back at lately like um uh 20 minutes before the the the, the end game right right tating bakit para na uh, what we noticed that napuna lang namin Pag nag-concede ng green archers ng goal, parang bumababa yung level ng laro. No. Bakit ganun? Hindi naman ganyan ang green archers dati, Mac. What? Actually, yung pag ano, yung instruction yung parati ng coaches, nakawala kami. Pag nag-score kami ng first first half, pag second half, dapat mimintin namin. But sometimes... We start um, slow sa pagdating sa second half. Mm-hmm. Baga, uh, slow starter, um, pagdating sa second half so dapat ano eh um uh kubaga high morale on the second half because we we sa, kasi uh, green archers every time na mag-start yung game um like a lot of chances minsan naka early goals kami against oh, oh, the, the opponent oh. so yung proble- problema namin sometimes is pagdating sa second half like yung um yung confident nawawala kasi yun nga um uh, nagre-rely sa score like 2-0 like uh, Pasargad uh, sa last um, uh, games namin against Pasargad. Yeah, first half we score early goals like seven minutes, mm-hmm. and then uh, we we start again sa second half a slow starter. So and then yeah, yun, uh, this score lang yung against namin like Pasargad or other team yung kalaban namin. Yung mga error lang namin binigyan namin ng chance yung kalaban para magscore. dapat more aggressive kami kasi yung kami yung advantage. Kami pa yung kami pa yung bumababa. Sila pa yung parang sila yung ad, yung kalaban yung parang uh, lamang sa game. Yun nga yung nangyari sa amin last night na lamang na tayo for the first half dapat more goals pa para makapasok yung ibang teammates namin sa loob ng field. Pero nung first two minutes ng second half, medyo nawala yung laro namin miscommunication at the back. So kaya nag-score yung back uh, yung striker ng nomads so right. yun kunting adjustment na naman after that's true Jonah you have any questions for these two fellows I have a couple questions actually um, first one questions for Chiefy Chiefy you left uh, Air Force yep. you know um, I would say left Air Force you went to Globe um, there's a lot of hype behind you going to Globe you know it's like, Chiefy's going to Globe you know ask calls <laughs> man's going to Globe um, do you, is there do you feel a big difference being away from Air Force and with with Globe with the Green Archers now is there a big difference do you feel a little bit uh, more pressure on Globe than you did on, on Air Force because Air Force you had you was you know it was always talking about Air Force it was always Ian Ernest uh, Chiefy no, yeah, that's so. not really a pressure about uh, my main new club uh, I transfer a new club with the uh, Globe Green Archers so yeah we, we start a uh, very new team young guys uh, new faces and then this is my li- like 12 uh, uh, I played 12 games in in in, um, in the my, my new club. So, um, parang it's, uh, uh, I cannot I cannot say that uh, I'm um experienced uh, player or, or uh, like um yeah I play in the national team, but uh, I can I could say that I can bring all my teammates in uh, uh, uh yeah yeah like that, that's it. So yeah. Uh, in the, in the, <laughs> the, that's in the my, my, my opinion is like if I if uh, I give uh, the the team give me a chance to, to play in that in that club, so I will do my my responsibility. So like Tating is my 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 teammates before in the national team. He knows me before pa. So and I know Tating right. before pa. So we play together with the uh, Arnie Pasinabo before. So. Mm-hmm. We try to bring the the team always in a positive uh, uh, way, like uh, like uh, para yung mga young players madala namin sa sa, sa good uh, level of football. So in, in the, yeah, so that's it. So walang no, no pressure at all sa, sa sa team. So the 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 management trying to 
to to bring the the, the new players mm-hmm. so in a good uh, conditions. Did you want to have a question yeah. for Tati? Yeah, for Tati, my question is: with Chiefy coming on board with you, you guys play together the national team. I've noticed just playing against both of you together, you guys have a little bit more chemistry, I would say, than than you and someone else on your on your team and another mm-hmm. player. Do, do you feel that, that that's true that with, you know you guys understand each other more than say you and I don't know maybe your, your left back and you get each other in movements and stuff well actually yung attacking third na yung uh, offense namin we have we don't have problem because uh, Pasinabo and Simpron and the offense are elongos so medyo <laughs> mag- <laughs> it's it's the the yeah. lahat kami sa taas like Pasinabo Simpron Chippy and I talaga magkaintindihan kasi all from same province Visayas so we have we don't have problem in on the top but sometimes yung problem lang namin yung chemistry from the midfield mm-hmm. and then from the backline how can we receive the ball from on the top uh, yun lang sometimes yung training namin uh, ga adjust lang kami before uh, to this before the game medyo konting adjustment lang na paano namin uh, how can we receive the ball from from the back line to the middle and then to the top so yun. I, I will add to you this uh, question ni Jonah no. Uh, may nagsasabi chief tsaka tating parang offense ng archers na napaka predictable puro wing play. So ang gina- lalo na parang uh, my theory is that archers is a big field team. If it's Rizal Memorial, you give the ball give the ball in space, space. to tating, tating can run faster than the d- defensive back and yeah, finish off, no? Yeah. Uh, uh, maraming, yeah. Maraming sa nagsasabi noon na uh, we're, we're good on top. We're good on uh, attacking uh, uh, offensive uh, players. So, yun yung... Uh, yeah, we play in Mac and Lee. It's like 80 by 60 yung, yung field. It's too small. Uh, small. So, we cannot, we cannot use our, our like, uh, yung sprint namin is... Like, yung sprint ko is 50. Just now. Yeah. 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 So, we cannot give all the time ng, ng wing plays kasi like Giovanni Simpron is as good a sprinter. Good crosser. Mm-hmm. Like what he did in, in the stallion before the, the yes. against uh, uh, um, Global. Mm-hmm. So, in that kind of um, situation ngayon, so, napa, napakahirap sa amin kasi it's like advantage sa, sa big guys, defenders, mm-hmm. nahirapan kami minsan kasi um, konting um, uh, magkakamali sa pasa da, da, yung depensa nandun minsan nandun kadali so uh, we accept that so we try to ano to, to get naman palaging uh, in the right timing we, we, how can we use our speed yung uh, good uh, accuracy of passing so tinatry namin yung best namin pero it's it's uh, uh, not really predictable um, okay. yung, 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 okay. mga, yung mga galaw namin so we we try but uh, siguro um kunting adjustment pa siguro dati uh, uh, compare last year yung field natin sa Rizal we have a more advantage like Chippy uh, me and then yung mga small strikers mm-hmm. advantage namin yung speed namin pag binigay yung uh, bola sa space talagang yun yung advantage namin na uh, advantage namin yung uh, Push the ball and then sprint. Oh, okay. Okay. That's the time na yun yung advantage namin. But in uh, the new field now, in Imperador field, like, medyo nahirapan pa kami. Okay. My question ako dyan. That's a very good point. If you look at the front line of the Green Archers, you have John John Meliza, you have Chief, you have Tating, and sometimes Dad. Said, well, sama mo na si Manok. <laughs> si Manok. So, <laughs> eto, may tanong ako. May katotohanan ba Size does not matter. Size but the thing, when it comes to attacking, not for the green archers. For sure. uh, no, 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 it's true. Kaya ako ng sabi, it's na uh, age doesn't matter, height doesn't matter, <laughs> di ba? So my next question: yeah. How old are you, Chiefy? I'm, I'm, uh, yung malita nong baka. <laughs> he looks like he's twenty. <laughs> he's twenty years old. Yes, I'm thirty. For for you guys that don't know, Green Archers is one of the few teams. Um, in the UFL that basically has all local players. Um, so that's that's where Green Archers get a lot of respect for me, having many, many local players and, you know, working within the country. I have a lot of respect for that. Good point, John. Um, when these guys talk about big, I'm asking both these guys to stand up real quick. Can you, can you both stand up real quick? <laughs> can I stand up? Stand? 
So they're off, the, they're off the, the screen. They, look, they, look, they might look huge right now. But they're off the screen. Do, don't, do not take anything about their size because uh, playing against these guys, it's just it's it's annoying. I, sorry guys, it's annoying. These guys never stop oh, moving. Take it as a compliment, that thing. Yeah, take it, as a, take it as a compliment. These guys never stop moving. They're so you know level to the ground. They get the ball. They got great foot skills, and they just. They get into these little spaces and somehow you see got these huge giants around them and they just come out, I don't know, through their legs or I don't know where they come from, but TV's yeah. <laughs> gonna teach me later how he does it. He's gonna teach later, but I got a lot of respect for Green Archers. Um, another question I have though is um, now that the first first round has ended, I know you guys probably don't have the amount of points that you expected uh -huh. or or you don't wanna be in your you know, you're kinda at the bottom of the table. What adjustments are you guys planning to do for the second round? You know, what have you guys learned from the first round that's going to help you move on to second round to uh, you know to get, get get into the top four, top five of the of the of the UFL this year? Yeah, that thing. Yeah. Well, uh, this coming second round, uh, most of the teams are very strong. So, na na kalaban namin lahat ng teams ng first round. Siguro yung mga kung yung play ng ng like uh, ibang teams nakakuha na namin during last ga last first round. So, I think this coming second round, this next this coming uh, Thursday against Stallion, so alam na namin yung mga like Crofo, oh, Stallion, uh, like the midfield Korean players, so alam na namin yung sino yung imamark, sino yung kailangan na uh, talagang hindi kailangan mag-hold ng bola. So, yun yung kailangan namin para at least makuha namin yung at the end of the second round makuha namin at least top five. Mm. Yep, uh, <laughs> it's a uh, good uh, to get uh, three points last night against the, the our last game in in uh, in um, first round. So yeah, uh, uh, it's a good start. We were also second round, so we know the teams already that we play before sa sa first round. So. We 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 ano review lang siguro about the, the teams that we play like uh, Stallion the first game I didn't okay. play so siguro so dun yung mga big adjustment against uh, and uh, also the big uh, teams like Shambre Kaya uh, Loyola and um, Stallions oh, and uh, and Global so yeah we we try to ano to always to to make uh, a good uh, chemistry game, good uh, good uh, game plan sa, sa second round okay. Um, that's it for this particular part, but we still have these two dudes because we have a game with them that we call the penalty shootout. The penalty so, shootout. Get it to that. It's very, very simple. We have five questions. Like a penalty shootout, there are five people taking a penalty kick. We will ask one question. The first person to touch the ball will get the chance to answer. Pagbalik, miss siya. Okay? So, at the end of five questions, sino pinakamaraming tamang sagot will win these gift checks from some coffee shop outside. All right. Okay. Nothing make it too ready. Ready? 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 So right now these guys teammates. are not teammates. They're not teammates. You're not the two smallest guys in Unifil getting after it. <laughs> okay, uh, Jonah, you want to go with the first question? Okay, first question. Make sure Chief is not looking over here. <laughs> what country? If you guys don't know this, I'm gonna be a little ashamed. This is your teammate. Okay. Is Green Archer Shag Chape Johnson from? Okay, Tatin. Liberia. Liberia! Oh, ding, 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 ding! Uh, JP! Sorry, sorry, I can't answer. <laughs> now the answer, Chief. Okay. The next question is um, Ilan ang national players sa global? Sino na wala sa inyo? Chief! Yes, yes. Chief! Um, no, below two minutes. <laughs> Five. You have a choice. Four. Multiple choice. A, ten, ten. Ten. B, seven. Ten, ten, C, ten, ten. ten. No, the an the correct answer is A. Lisa Gbadoran, Carly De Morga, Patrick Reichel, Ed Sakupano, Dennis Wolf, Marvin Angeles, Jeffrey Christens, and Jason Dale. How about the before? Um, before, but. Hindi po siya kami. Current player. Mat, mat, mat. Si Bato yung sa Leola na. Hintag. Oh my God. May protest tayo dito. Si Jerry Barbaso, wala na sila. Jonah, third question. Both of you guys score a lot of goals, so you guys gotta know this one. Phil Young Husband won the Golden Boot Award in the UFL last year. The question is, how many goals did he score? 
23? Yes! Because he was on his butt chasing him. He was, he was in the running. He was in the running. He was in the running. <laughs> okay. Team then zero? So it's two. Zero. 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 Okay. The next question. How many players from Green Archers United ang nanggaling sa FU? Three. Wrong. <clears throat> the correct answer is five. Ronnie Agisanda, John Meliza, including Manok, Sean Lee, Jake Hugo, and Giovanni Simpron. Five. Wrong. Saking answer yun. Wrong. <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> Dapat six that you won. Ja, Ronnie Spinoza. Unang si Spinoza. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> Five. Two one. Two one. Jonah, the next question. Two one. For the final penalty kick. Ano yung standing ng Green Archers United? Tek, di pa ako tapos. Oh, oh, NC, oh, NC. Oh, oh, oh. Ready? Go. At the end of the first round of the season. Eight. Uh, uh, eight, 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 eight. Ano final standing yun? Eight. Win, loss, draw, na kung yun. I'll give you a hint. There's nine games, so you're already, you're already wrong. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> <laughs> the correct answer is seven. Two wins. Okay. One draw. One draw. Okay. Six loss. Six, Six losses. So there weren't even 500. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. the winner. Sorry. The winner. It's nothing. Of, uh, I just want to make sure I'm giving out the correct envelope here. Starbucks. Starbucks goes to Tatik Pasilan, uh -huh. but we have a consolation prize. Also for Chief We're all winners here. They're all everyone's the winner. So, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Okay, okay. Uh, we want to bid these uh, boys goodbye. They're gonna, they're gonna go back and train tonight. I don't know what they're gonna do. Maybe train. Maybe they're gonna sleep. Think about the upcoming game against Talion. But we want to thank these two dudes. Uh, hopefully, we'll see them back in a future episode of Fever Pitch. When we come back, we're gonna wrap up this show. What you've been missing on the factory. And now we're gonna show you guys the new beta that just came out yesterday. It's God of War Ascension, the private beta for and PlayStation Plus. PlayStation Plus. Let's watch it, right? It's nice and we can play already. Yes. Yep. There you go. And perfect timing. <laughs> perfect timing. Well, before that, I was, I was kicking ass. So go with the theme of the show, How Not to, How play. Not to play. It's Robert Rice and Friends with Alfonso Martinez, Mickey Han, and Nigel Zalameo. Fridays, 6 to 7 p.m., only here on The Factory. All right, uh, this is the end of our first episode of Fever Pitch. Uh, there's a big game on Thursday. Uh, unfortunately, Jonah cannot talk about that game because he's going to be playing in that game against Global, but it's a very, very important game. What Loyola and Stalin is hoping is that Kaya, Kaya, which is on its way back, they're moving, trying to, they're up now to number four in the standings. Do we want to solidify that position? And it's going to be a very, very tough game, but Global under David Perkovich is just performing way better. But the defending champions are a whole lot on another level. So that's going to be a very, very important game with a lot of ramifications for the UFL in the first round. But we want to say goodbye at the end of this first episode. Next week, we're going to have... Next week, we're going to have a mysterious guest. So in order to find out, you're going to have to check our Twitter. Twitter. Our yeah. Twitter. Mine's Jonah Romero 9 And mine is Ricky Olivares. And just be looking out for a little clip of who we'll have next week on here as our guest. Right. Like again, we're not gonna tell you now because you gotta check our Twitter, give us a little bit more views, you know, get some credentials in there. But uh, it's gonna be a fun episode next week. And, definitely. And again, guys, keep keep uh, sticking with us. Again, it was our first episode. Like I said, we're we're rookies at this first time yep, here. We're just uh, feeling our way around. Feeling it out. But it's gonna get know, a whole lot uh, better. We're gonna see a lot more interesting guests. As right time through. goes on, we'll have more interesting guests, a lot of characters. Uh, you never know who's gonna pop in here. 
But you know what? I just want to give a little props to my team, Liverpool. Yeah, it's before, Liverpool. Before we go, before we go. Not much of a Liverpool fan, but uh, I'll give props to Mizuno. <laughs> uh, this side, Mizuno. But anyway, thank you for watching Fever Pitch. It's been a blast this first episode. You want to thank the dudes at the New Media Factory. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I want to say thanks to Mac2. Awesome. I want to say Mac thanks to Mac2. Uh, to all the fans out there, all the supporters, uh, to the New Media Factory, definitely thank you for having us. Um, and guys, just keep tuning in every Wednesday, 6 p.m., right here. Jonah, I think you got a fever. I definitely got a fever. All right, see you guys. See you guys. What you've been missing on the fact.